Welcome to another episode of A Life Worth Living. What is the common thread that connects us all? Sometimes we feel alone and we believe that we are the only person on earth who could possibly feel this way. But maybe we all have more in common than we think. So we're asking for people's point of view to talk about their experiences in an attempt to better ourselves and find the common thread that connects us all. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Anaheim Stoneworks and Master Toddy LA Training Center. Our guest today went from a lavish life of whining and dining to house arrest. It's my pleasure to introduce to you, Garvey Daniels. Welcome, Garvey. Thanks for coming on. Thank you very much for having me. I think, uh, you know, having having known your background and, and working together and uh, want to start off thinking, you know, when we first met, the funny thing is, is that we did have something in common from, from the get-go, Absolutely. both coming uh, from recovery and being in, in the programs, um, that we both were paid to party and, and, and drink uh, when we suffered from alcoholism. Because we're geniuses. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, we were able to find people that were willing to pay for us to drink for a living. <laughs> so we thought. Right? So we Smartest thought. people in the world. I have a disease. I can get my disease funded. <laughs> I need to learn my product and see what these things are like. So you're out at 10 o'clock in the morning, you're tasting accounts, and I was home by one. I was hammered. One, 1 p.m.? What, yeah, three hours <laughs> later. I was Not one eight. And I was thinking, I don't know how I'm going to do this job. I'm destroyed all the time. And so when I moved back to the States, my father had fallen ill, so I came home to be with him, and I went back to the casino business. And uh, one of the neighbors that lived down the street from us uh, worked as a designer for Tommy Bahamas, and a great friend, talking to him about wines and the wine business. And he had a friend that worked for a Young's Market, which is the competitor for Southern. He said, let me, let me introduce you to her. Maybe there's an opportunity. And through that, I met other people with Southern. And I thought, why not follow a passion for a job rather than right. just working in the casinos, which was financially lucrative, but soul sucking so how i mean how does that work out for you given that you had a drinking problem but you loved the wine industry you you really enjoyed your job you were passionate about it but you had a conflict there well i didn't i didn't because i loved wine and i loved going out and drinking at the time i didn't think i had a problem i'd go out i drink i get drunk no problem that's fine it would i didn't see all the negativity that looking back in the situations I ended up in. and What were those some of those situations? Oh, I put well, my when career you know, in jeopardy a few when times. Did, when did you know you had a problem? I knew I drank differently when I was 19. Okay, was, so how, when you were 19, you noticed. How, how, how did you notice that there was a difference? Uh, I knew that I had different friends for different days of the week because the guys that didn't have class Tuesday morning, would go out on Monday night, and I'd go out with them. And the guys who didn't have class Wednesday morning, yeah, they could go out Tuesday. I out. could go out and I'd plan. And then I, I, there were times when, so, and you and I have talked about this, with the, the analogy of putting your foot on the gas and you're, and you're drinking. And so you're going and you're having a great time, but you kind of know when it, the, the good time's over and it's starting to get bad and you can put your foot on the brake. And I could do that every now and then. Most of the time, it was like somebody had cut the brakes and the gas was just down. And whether it was starting to change and it wasn't a good time anymore, I was still drinking. And I was waking up in different places. I was putting myself in bad situations. It, things were just not right. But it was, oh, God, I just, okay, I'm not drinking again for a while, as we all have done. Until yeah. the next couple of days, you're starting to feel better. You, you're not, you're not <laughs> you throwing up anymore. You the Everything's great. Right. So it's so, like an on and off switch. Though. I mean, you can yeah. turn, when it would turn on, it couldn't turn it when off. That, I've, and I've always said that. It's funny you said that. The analogy of having a switch. Like when that switch flipped, I was done. I could not drink. What well, got to that? Because at first it was you could turn it on, you could turn it off. And you know, then, I, don't, I don't know. It never. Well, you I said with the brakes, though, is, is you right. would be able to put the brakes on. So you had some control over it, but it progressively got worse. As it we did. Know, it tends to and do. it did. It definitely progressively got worse and worse because the. I never knew when that time was going to happen. The, that those breaks could get cut after one beer, or it could get cut hours later after doing drinks and shots and everything else. And even then, sometimes it was fine. And that's where I knew something was off in the way I drank because I never knew going out 
when that was going to happen. And, and then I started going, okay, if I'm going out tonight, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to drink as much. I'm not going to get drunk. And you start planning. Right. Normal people don't have to plan their drinking. Well, I'm just <laughs> impressed from 19. I'm just looking at our ages and just kind of being in a, a whether it's a casino, I mean, similar backgrounds. I mean, I went from, I mean, I started I, experimenting at 16, 17, you know, and, but I only lasted until I was 20, 23. Yeah, you went pretty I'm just, but aggressively. <laughs> I, I did. Well, have, were you functional? Because it seems like you were functional. I was. So, I, I mean, went and I have a master's degree. I worked for a law firm. Uh, but knowing he had a problem, though, I was at 19. That's, and then he, la like, that's working in the field and stuff. That's a long time, like, being able to look at when there was an issue. I couldn't have, I couldn't have made it another uh, year. I've been hospitalized for pancreatitis for oh, um, really? drinking excessively. When was that? Times. Um... Early 90s. I graduated university in 1990, and I was working for a law firm in Cincinnati. And I remember in 92. Well, that's a big reason. That's a big sign of an alcohol problem. Yeah. I so mean, how how old were you? Um, 23. Yeah. So that's. I mean. Yeah. Not most 23 yeah. year olds don't. Don't have go to the hospital <laughs> twice. For oh, just being him. Right? We we yeah. we fell in that same boat. You know, we're 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 not sick. We're just passionate about what we enjoy. <laughs> dedicated. <laughs> dedicated. Oh boy. So. so wasn't that like a when? So you're in the hospital. You have pancreatitis. Whatever. What you know? <laughs> um, it wasn't. Huh? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wasn't that like a big red flag to you? Like, uh, something's not right here. Like, what did you think when that happened? That did I should probably just control it. Like, next time I go out drinking, I won't binge drink, which was what I would do. But you could do that for. Happen. You could do yeah. it for a while. Yeah, you can. Do you think that's because you had structure in your life? I mean, you had work, you had school, or whatever it may have been. I mean, there was some accountability to it. <clears throat> Absolutely. Well, I and it was at the time that I was working on my master's. I was working three jobs and going to school at night. So that's a big so difference. I had between so us. many things going on, but then I would plan. Like I would study, and I had I was very structured in the way I was living. But on the nights that I went out, I went out hard. Did you feel like because you were going to school and you had a job, like you had it together? Like, I don't have a problem because clearly I'm doing things with my life. Right. And that, I think, uh, for me, because I've always been that person, like going three jobs and going to school, working in the casinos, very set, structured, ended up teaching classes and teaching how to deal craps and teaching blackjack. And then with work, and I've always been very structured. And because I've always fortunately been successful and promoted that I always thought I can't have a problem. Look at my, look at my life. I've got a good life. I'm doing well in my career. Uh -huh. But are you can't... financially independent and stuff? I mean, did we, or did you have your, you did everything on your, everything. See, on I think that's a huge, huge thing though, is you had a career and a life kind of going for you. I mean, you did. Right. Or I look at somebody like myself, it's kind of like the failure to launch that we talk about in today's society where this kid's you know, or just stagnant or people aren't doing stuff with their life. Right. I mean, I had no skills to do that. You know, I was, I drank every morning, day and night. I didn't have anything to show up to. So I think that's, look at the difference there. I was just curious. But the beauty is that's why you're able to relate to so many people at that level and the failure to launch and do that where sometimes when I'm talking to people, it's, I, I don't get, I have that correlation because I was out so early and on my own. Yeah. And doing that. No, but that's impressive. I mean, you, so, sorry to mean to cut you off on no, that. You know, you're talking about the, so the, going back into the school, you know, and with the three jobs. Um, so how, when, when was the, the big spiral that like, I mean, where it just went out of control. What happened at the, at the falling point from this? Well, the big spiral came, uh, in 2011, May 15th, 2011 was my first DUI. Oh. And, uh. But not the, not the time in the hospital when you're 23? No. Nothing else woke me up. <laughs> Honestly, nothing else. And I don't think anything else would have woken me up. Because wow. when I got the DUI, um, that wasn't the first time I had driven in that condition. I had, you just I, hadn't been caught yet? I just hadn't been caught. So how did that DUI, like, why did it wake you up? How did it affect your life? Uh, it put my job in jeopardy. I was very fortunate that the gentleman that I was working for believed in me enough as an employee to really go and fight for me to keep my job. See, I find that that's just our thinking though. I mean, we were in the hospitals. Right. Our, we were talking about that was to save my job. 
we were dying, <laughs> right? You know, and that's what no, we look absolutely. at is. I mean, that was your that was your moment. I mean, but this that's the justification. I think just looking at a, the brands, like we're dying in the hospital, but there's there's yeah. different moments that we look at. Yeah. You know, until I was literally almost gonna die, like in a car accident or driving off a cliff and passed out, and I remember it. Then it woke me up. And then even not so much. I remember was telling this before my boss, or after the DUI. Um, well, the accident. Yeah. I had an accident. The first DUI, I rear-ended somebody. Okay. And then they saved my job. And I remember talking to my one of my bosses, and saying, "Hey, look, I I got to slow down, and I, I think I need to for me. I I think I've I've got a problem. Like I need to quit drinking." And he looked at me and goes, "I pay you to drink." <laughs> I went all right. Really? Yep. So I'm like, all right. So then we're trying to figure out ways where I could drink vodka sodas and spit it into my water or like order the vodka and a soda water and kind of switch them or finding ways to trick accounts into thinking I'm drinking or doing it. And then uh, two years, two years to almost to the day, May 16th, 2013, I was at an account and ended up getting my second DUI. And that's where... What happened in that one? Uh, we were at a sushi restaurant trying to get the business and I brought in a 15 year old Japanese whiskey and hundred dollar bottle of sake thinking I'm going to impress this guy. We're going to have a great time. <laughs> this is gonna be, we're going to eat good food. This is going to be brilliant. Yeah. And they told me I ended up, I don't remember. And they told me I ended up standing on the tables, chugging the whiskey. Out of the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, just getting in a fight. You had a good time. Oh, got in a huge fight with my girlfriend in front of my, oh, just, so we actually didn't get the account. Funny enough. And um, yeah, I ended up uh, coming really? to. Really? Dancing on the table wasn't? That, you would have thought. I would have hired you, dude. I would have hired right? you. Sales and entertainment all at once. Yeah, but, man. Yeah, I came to in the uh, Laguna Beach Police Department. And when I came to, realized where I was, uh, I stood up really quick because I was freaked out. And then my knees buckled because I realized the weight of all of it. Like, there went my career. There went everything, because I knew why I was there, that I'd been arrested again, another DUI, and that's that second DUI is life changing, and I. You're just lucky my, that you didn't. Uh, I mean, that you. And didn't. that was my fear. Yeah, die or kill remember. someone. Yeah. That was my greatest fear. Is yeah. That I don't remember. The first one I still remember bits and pieces. That second one I don't remember to this day. I remember nothing. That's so scary. And it, it literally, even now, it, it that empty pit, it freaks me out that I could have killed somebody. I could have gone off. And I know the the path that I took home down the coast, there's so many places I could have veered off and gone off a cliff that I put my life in danger. I put everybody's life in danger that I drove past is devastating. It, it breaks my heart. And that, that feeling that, oh my God, what have I done? changed everything and it's um yeah it's everything is different now there's a gentleman in one of the meetings that i go to that is awaiting uh trial the attorneys are going back and forth and he got in a car accident and killed the passenger and he's an amazing guy and it just you realize that it doesn't matter you well, can that's... be from the the upper echelon of society and life to the, the bottom and alcohol is the great equalizer and you get drunk and you get in the car. It doesn't matter who you are that you put yourself and everybody around you in that situation. And it's yeah crazy. A very selfish act. Yeah. For sure. So what, what, after you got this DUI, how did your life change? What did you, what was lost or how did you start to kind of recover? What happened? Well, everything changed. Um, when I spoke, I called my boss and told him what had happened. He's like, well, there's nothing we can do for you now. Like, you're done. Yeah. Like, you can keep your job until you get convicted, and the day you get convicted, you're fired. Basically, because two of them can't insure you anymore. Mm. So I knew I was losing my job. Um, that was came from the guy that said, we're going to pay you to drink. Yes. Yeah, I know, And from right? the guys that fought really hard for me to keep my job. And they both, my two, my district manager and my regional vice president, are amazing guys and they've done everything and they were lovely uh, gentlemen friends and did what they could to help but i did this to myself of course and there was nothing they could do at that point um you know having to call my mom 
my stepdad and let them know what was going on. And I had hidden the first one from them. So then everything had to come out in the shame and the humiliation that that spawned inside of me. I couldn't call them for four or five days. But I think just going back to that, though, it's just in the beginning, uh, just touching back on that when you, because you went to your boss first, I'm thinking I had a problem. That's I think what we're here too is to educate people on on the, the reality of this thing because there is something they could have done you know from right. the beginning is they could have supported you when he said you think you had a problem. Um, I don't know. I just think it's important to point that out. No, absolutely. And I should have been more forceful and saying, "Look, I can't do this." I, I could have taken steps then. But you but weren't in the right state of mind yourself right to do that. I but, was thinking I've got two years. I'm almost off probation. I was on three years probation. We're finding ways to trick people. This is easy. You know, I can still drink at home. I can still have a glass of wine with my girlfriend at dinner. Still go out with friends. And then there were still times when we'd go out and be like, oh, I'm okay. I'll be fine. But see, that's just because I, I have the, the same disease. thought process. But no, but it's also the influence from the outside because it seems like it's not a big deal. Right. You know, that's the problem. I think, you unfortunately, it takes it. It. something big or tragic or traumatic for people to realize when that it, there's, there's a problem. There's, there's a movement yeah. being pushed right now, for sure. Absolutely. And it's, you know, you hear in the rooms that I, my bottom or some people had a low bottom or a high bottom. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it just takes what it takes. Mm -hmm. For me, it took tragic, I mean, not life-ending tragedy so it took something tragic for me the loss of job the loss of like fortunately my family still supported me but that's important it's a loss of you know to well, me my, my what esteem i had i was really good at my job and that was taken away from me right no income i i and then the all the fear and the humiliation and the regret and the embarrassment that you just feel under this massive weight. How did you deal um, with that? Because now you're probably at like a low point in your life. You're feeling like super crappy about yourself. Absolutely. How did you pick yourself back up? Uh, it took a long time, actually. It took a very long time. I ended up um, not only losing the job, I lost my license for a year, which is standard. I was under house arrest for 118 days. Uh, I was unemployed for a year and a half. I had taken a test to get my insurance license and it took and did extremely well on the test. But the Department of Insurance considered me a public nuisance because of the DUI. So it wow. took me a year and a half and going in front of a judge in the Department of Insurance and pleading my case until they've recently uh, granted me the license. But it's a year and a half with no job. Uh, I was unemployable in the industry that I had been very successful at. Right. Uh, even other departments within it going and selling coffee or selling water or anything else in sales because if I had to drive, I'm uninsurable. You know, my, your insurance goes out. I mean, so many things. So it has it was, affected you for the rest of your life, uh, really. Absolutely. But it's recently uh, things have started to change. You, you know, for, I think a lot for men, their esteem and self-worth is tied into their job. And mm -hmm. I've recently started with a new job that I absolutely love, that's been amazing and the brilliant opportunities. And now is that starting to take shape and start to grow and you start feeling better about yourself. And then I've done a lot of reading. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of work in the program and within AA and applying the principles and the letting go. Because you, you, you have two years now, right? Two years, came up on two years. Congratulations, man. That's, Thanks, man. Yeah, that's congratulations. awesome. I give you a lot of credit. I mean, you know, you at 40, at 44 would have been when, uh, when that everything went down. I'll be 47 in July. So, so yeah, you were, you were 44. 44. So people I mean, can so, change. But at 44, I mean, right. you were, you're a 44 year old man with a full blown career that lost everything yeah. is what yeah. it came down to. And that, what, can I ask you something? Maybe it might be personal to an effect, uh, but like financially and where you were as, as you were in that career and, and as you were moving up and stuff, and then you had that big pitfall and then that restart, what was it? I mean, seeing where you're at today and yeah. you know, what the life is starting to look like sober, you sort of with this new job that you got, things are looking great and stuff like that. And yeah. you know, you're maybe just success wise or financials might've been better you know, when you're in your disease, let's say. Um, but what, what's the, what do you notice? I mean, would you rather have the life that you had then that you thought was great or knowing this side, you know, the being clean, 
Uh, no, the financially, absolutely. The life before I, that I had working in the wine industry and the liquor business and even with the casinos, my life financially was phenomenal. My life spiritually, emotionally, not so great. Because I think uh, for me, a lot of the reason I drank was social lubrication, insecurity. I was able to talk more easily and, and feel like I could let my personality out a little bit more because I was so insecure that now going through the process and going through AA and learning to apply the principles and, and feeling better and like with the job, I would much rather have my life now. That's a question. Yeah. So much more. There, It's night and day. Like financially, yeah, that was great. But I have an opportunity to rebuild and I can build the finances back up. But the work that I'm able to do with me mm -hmm. and how I feel, and when I wake up every morning and I say my prayers and I walk out the door and I'm happy to go to work and life looks better. I mean, I know that sounds really Pollyanna. <laughs> and I know that sounds really, she's like, yay. You know, but, <laughs> it, but it's true. The, the reality is that finances, they, they're great, but they don't bring you out. Yeah. All, you know, they don't bring you long-term happiness. I always used to joke around and they say the money doesn't buy happiness. Well, you're shopping in the wrong place. <laughs> the money can buy some good, happy things. Yeah. But how do you feel about yourself? Like, that's great. Go buy the new purse. Go buy a new suit. Go buy all these great things. And tomorrow you're going to need to buy something else too. Because yeah, you're covering it's, it's something It's so up. fleeting. Yeah. And now it's like, and the friendships I have are friendships. Right. It's not, I don't have drinking buddies. I have friends. <laughs> I'm happy that you were able to turn your life around and that you're helping other people now because that's so important. And your perspective is amazing. I really think if you can share that with more people, it's going to help a lot of people. There's, so a, there's a saying I heard um, when I first got in the rooms. said the the closer you can push other people to the top of the mountain, the closer to the top you get. Yeah. And so that's kind of how I feel with this. The yeah. more we help get people to the top of the mountain, so to speak, the closer we get ourselves. Yeah. Thank yeah, you so much. Show, I mean, dude, appreciate it. You got so much knowledge. You're super intelligent, intellectual. You got so much to offer. Uh, thanks, so brother. Appreciate it. You, you I'll know, pay you later. Out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take checks, Visa, MasterCard. Cool. Thanks, thank you appreciate so much it. for coming on. Cool. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Make sure to catch us every Tuesday by subscribing to our channel. Let us know in the comments below how you make life worth living. We're sure you have lots of great tips to share and by working together, we can all thrive. I have it memorized. <laughs> She's good. I think that's gonna be good. One more time, let's do it again. The speed needs to be a little bit faster. Can you make it a little bit faster? No, I think it's better that way because I need to We'd like to thank Anaheim Stone for making this show possible. Nothing says luxury like enhancing your surroundings with natural quality stone. Master Toddy LA Training Center offers authentic Muay Thai training with locations in Bangkok, Pomona, and Anaheim. For more information, visit mastertoddyla.com.